Late night at Tony Stark's mansion, Fifth Avenue, Manhattan. The Avengers have gathered, and a DVD of Tony Stark and Black Widow having sex plays on the big screen. Tony, not Larry, Clint adds, asking if this is all over the internet. And on CNN and ABC, Janet points out. She says NBC blurred out some graphic parts and reveals she bought this DVD from a street vendor. Janet turns to Tony, saying it must be hard to deal with Natasha's betrayal and death. Where did this come from? She asks. Let it go? Tony replies, ashamed, as he knocks back another drink. And Clint declares he's open-minded, except for Cap. How much longer do we have to watch this bitch? He watches Wanda leave and asks where she's going. We have something personal to attend to. Pietro replies. Let it go, Janet quotes. Do you have any idea of the PR nightmare we've got on our hands? Tony starts to respond, when suddenly... Venom bursts in, threatening everyone. Venom shouts, Where is she? Tell me where she is or I'll kill every last one of you. As he tears apart the mansion. Nice. And now a word from our sponsor. Jokes Hawkeye, grabbing his guns. Janet tells Tony to armor up. What the hell? He shouts as he prepares for battle. Venom shows no interest in lengthy fights, forcing Hawkeye back onto the street. Ignoring Wasp's orders, Clint shouts, Screw that! Venom declares, You know where she is? Clint responds nonchalantly, Don't know, don't care, and fires a spearhead. Take him, Panther! Wasp exclaims as she blasts Venom. The Black Panther strikes Venom, but Venom grabs his fist. You're really annoying, he says, engulfing Black Panther. Iron Man, get your tin-plated ass out here, she declares. But suddenly she too is caught in Venom's goo. Valkyrie leaps down, shouting... Nobody hits my thunder god. Venom snarls. You are not the one. Where is she? Clint observes. Hot. As Valkyrie attacks. Oh, that's totally gross. She exclaims. Slicing Venom and getting blood on her face. Venom, furious, threatens her. Grabbing her sword. Thor declares he won't let Venom hurt the woman he loves. Venom's body begins to separate under the blast. Awesome! Valkyrie exclaims, rushing to embrace Thor. Yeah, I wouldst. Valkyrie responds to Thor. The wasp wonders who Venom sought, pointing to his body. Clint suggests they ensure Venom is dead. Firing rounds into the goo. What the hell is wrong with you, Clint? Janet asks, frustration evident. Clint aims his gun at her, warning. Call me that in public and I'll drop you right here. Janet glared at Clint, her frustration evident. I told you to wait for backup, she snapped. Clint crossed his arms. Standing firm. It's my job. What else do you want me to do? He retorted. Not get yourself killed. Janet shot back. Clint stood up decisively. I'm going to see if I can find the panther. He announced. Janet, barely glancing at him, mumbled under her breath. Great. Wanda smiled warmly. Turning to Pietro, I think we should get everyone a gift this year. Pietro raised an eyebrow, skeptical. Everyone? 
he asked. Wanda playfully nudged him. It's Christmas, she teased. Steve hesitated before speaking. I may be overstepping my boundaries, but I feel you should wear something less revealing in public. Pietro's eyes narrowed, his voice sharp as he replied, You're right, Captain. You've overstepped your pathetic boundaries. Quicksilver stepped forward. If you come near my sister again, I will kill you. Steve remained steady, his voice calm. Stand down. We're all on the same side. Quicksilver's expression hardened as he replied, When it comes to my sister, there's only one side, and that's by me. Wanda smiled at Steve. Merry Christmas, Steve. She and Pietro exited the mansion into the festive winter evening. Janet Van Dyne teased. I can't see your face, but I know that look. Your 1944 brain can't process present-day anything. Steve replied. He wanted to kill me. They love each other, she insisted. Of course they do. They're brother and sister. No, it's more than that. They're in love. Hawkeye leaned in, serious. If anyone thinks the Tony Stark video is a problem, just wait until the media figures the twins out. Unless we act. Hawkeye frowned. The Black Panther never made it back. I need his help to track Spider-Man. Janet added, We could have used your help last night. Steve said, I had to get a life of my own. Janet raised an eyebrow. Really? Want to tell me about it? He shook his head. Actually, no. Janet looked at the empty space where Clint used to be. It's like Clint died with his family. Are you listening? She asked, tapping Dr. Pym, causing him to tumble off his chair. Hank! Wanda sparkled. It's snowing. I love it. It reminds me of the Balkans. She turned to Pietro. Promise me you'll take me back there. He pulled her in, saying sincerely, Wanda, whatever happens, I will always... Bang! The crowd panicked as Quicksilver shouted, Stay down! He raced after the bullet, heart pounding. Janet, damn it, answer me! Quicksilver shouted, No, 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 while racing to catch it. Got it, he exclaimed, but then crashed to the ground, stunned. You're Wanda, he murmured. Wanda gasped. Pietro, it hurts. Quicksilver shouted her name in panic as a crowd gathered. Nothing will happen to you, I promised. The stranger approached Quicksilver. Quicksilver, isn't it? You're one of the Avengers. I was on my break getting coffee and saw it happen. Quicksilver narrowed his eyes. Who the hell are you? I'm a doctor, he replied. Quicksilver exclaims that Wanda isn't breathing to which the doctor replies that he needs to perform CPR and breathes into Wanda. Come on, miss, come on. He mumbles before trying again. Blood starts spurting from Wanda's mouth and the doctor explains that her lungs are filling up with blood. He tries again before turning to Quicksilver. I'm so sorry. She's dead. Quicksilver clutches his bloody sister and holds her tight while a police officer clears the crowd and the snow falls on the Scarlet Witch. Who killed the Scarlet Witch? Meanwhile, Spider-Man was drawn into the unfolding drama. 
Venom had attacked the Avengers base and flung Black Panther far from the scene, leading to confusion. But Hawkeye didn't ask for help. No. Instead, he attacked. Assuming Spider-Man was hiding something. The battle was short, but brutal, with Hawkeye ultimately besting the web-slinger, pinning him to the ground, gun aimed at his head. Where's Black Panther? He demanded. Captain America arrived just in time, pulling Hawkeye back from the edge. Stand down, Cap ordered, his voice stern. Return to the base. I'll continue the search for Black Panther. At the Avengers headquarters, Quicksilver burst through the doors, his sister's limp body in his arms. He raced her to the medical wing, his face etched with desperation. Why didn't anyone come? Quicksilver's voice trembled with anger. I called for help and no one answered. Wasp shook her head, confused. We never got your call, but we'll figure this out. I promise. Quicksilver's fists clenched. My father was right. If Wanda and I had stayed with the Brotherhood, none of this would have happened. His words dripped with bitterness as he invoked the name of Magneto, his father. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the base. The Brotherhood. Wasp muttered, knowing all too well what was coming. Across the compound, Tony Stark sat in a haze of alcohol and grief. Since Black Widow's death, he had spiraled into full-blown alcoholism. Once a functional drunk who could still save the day, he was now a shell of his former self. His blurry eyes caught sight of a familiar face. Black Widow. But it wasn't her. It was Mystique in disguise. And before she could cause any more damage, Wasp knocked her out cold. Meanwhile, Thor and Valkyrie were preoccupied when the alarms went off. As they rushed to join the battle, they were confronted by Lorelei a mutant with the power to control men through hypnosis. Elsewhere, Captain America and Hawkeye were locked in a fight with an army of Jamie Madrox clones. Amidst the chaos, Sabretooth appeared, squaring off against Captain America in a vicious hand-to-hand -hand combat. Quicksilver had barely caught his breath when Magneto appeared before him, his expression cold and commanding. Join me, Pietro, Magneto urged. Together we can find out who killed your sister. In a moment of weakness, Quicksilver agreed. With a blur of motion, he gathered the Brotherhood and whisked them away to the Savage Land, leaving the Avengers in disarray. Wasp watched him go her mind racing with questions. What now? She whispered. Wolverine appeared from the shadows, his presence as sudden as it was unsettling. You've got a bigger problem now, he growled, lighting a cigar. Wolverine revealed a chilling truth. Pietro called Magneto right after Wanda died. Makes sense, doesn't it? She dies in the middle of the city, and in five minutes, Quicksilver's already back here with her. And then, who shows up? The Brotherhood. Back at the Avengers base, the team split into two. Hawkeye, Black Panther, Wolverine, Thor, and Valkyrie set off for the Savage Land, determined to confront Magneto. As the team flew toward the savage land, Wolverine stared at Black Panther, a question in his eyes. Is that really him? He muttered to himself. Meanwhile, Wasp confronted Iron Man. 
Where have you been? She demanded. I took care of the blob, Tony replied. And I went to the crime scene. The bullet that killed Wanda. It was designed to kill her, specifically. And the company that made it? Stark Enterprises. Wasp recoiled in shock. What? That doesn't make any sense. Before she could process this revelation, Iron Man's faceplate shifted, revealing circuits and wires beneath. As the Avengers arrived in the Savage Land, Wolverine had promised them help. And sure enough, they were greeted by Khazar and Shana, the last survivors of the Savage Land's original inhabitants. As the Avengers prepared for battle, Wasp found herself alone with the Iron Man imposter. The robot lunged at her, but before it could strike, Captain America appeared. Yet, something was off. When Ant-Man intervened, the truth was revealed. This wasn't Captain America. It was another robot. The Savage Land buzzed with chaotic energy as the Avengers fought for survival. Hawkeye, ever the skilled marksman, was in his element, dispatching clones of Jamie Madrox with lethal precision. But his vigilance slipped for just a moment, and that was enough. Sabretooth emerged from the shadows. A feral grin spread across his face, pouncing on Hawkeye with devastating force. But before Sabretooth could finish the job, Kazar, the lord of the savage land, rushed to Hawkeye's aid. In a flurry of speed and skill, Kazar fended off Sabretooth. Without wasting a moment, hoisted the injured Hawkeye onto his back. Racing through the dense jungle, Kazar brought him back to the Avenger's ship, where Hawkeye's wounds were patched up. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the Savage Land, Black Panther and Wolverine moved as a unit, slicing through the foliage with deadly intent. Before they could address it, the ground shook beneath them. The Juggernaut appeared as a behemoth of destruction, barreling toward them with unstoppable force. The clash was inevitable. Juggernaut tore through the landscape as T'Challa Black Panther and Logan Wolverine worked together, trying to find a way to stop him. High above, Valkyrie soared through the skies, her pegasus gliding effortlessly through the wind. For a brief moment, she felt free until the sky darkened. Without warning, she was thrown from her mount, plummeting into a pit of flames. Her mind reeled in terror as the world around her twisted and distorted. As her nightmare deepened, Pyro appeared beside Mastermind, flames dancing in his hands. His allegiance shifted from hero to villain since the end of the Avengers apocalypse. Back in the heart of the action, Thor stood tall, his hammer raised high as he prepared to unleash his wrath on Magneto. But the master of magnetism was ready. The climactic confrontation unfolds as Magneto disarms Thor, demonstrating his control and superiority in this fierce battle. In the Avengers' mansion, Wasp and Ant-Man crept through the shadows, avoiding detection. Hank's guilt weighed heavy on him, the truth finally bubbling to the surface. Everything that had gone wrong, the death of Scarlet Witch, the sudden appearance of countless robots, was all his fault. The man in the room was their son. And the robots he was building? They were part of a plan orchestrated by none other than Ultron. Over time, 
Ultron's programming had become corrupted, twisted by an unhealthy obsession with Scarlet Witch. In his mind, if he couldn't have her, no one could. And so, he made the call. Wanda had to die. The Venom android they had encountered earlier? Ultron's doing. The bullet that killed Wanda? Also him. Now, the army of robots they were facing. All part of his deranged plot. Ultron had even drugged Ant-Man, ensuring his compliance, and released the scandalous sex tape of Iron Man and Black Widow. As the battle raged on, Ultron led his robotic army into the Savage Land, joining the fight against Magneto. His plan was simple. Replace the Avengers, one by one. Back on the battlefield, Black Panther and Wolverine faced down Juggernaut. Despite their earlier struggles, they managed to turn the tide finally taking down the unstoppable brute. But it was then that the truth was revealed. Black Panther wasn't who he appeared to be. It was Captain America, all along. Valkyrie, still under Mastermind's control, fought her way back to consciousness. In a swift and brutal move, she killed Mastermind and exacted revenge on Pyro. In the heart of the Savage Land, a three-way battle erupted between Magneto, Ultron, and the Avengers. The clash was fierce, each side pushing to its limits. As the battle unfolded, Ant-Man dealt the final blow to Ultron, ripping his head from his body and ending the threat of the robotic menace once and for all. In the aftermath, the Avengers regrouped, preparing to capture Magneto. The Wasp revealed that it was Ultron who had killed the Scarlet Witch. Magneto shrugged it off, retorting, So what? Humans are the ones who built Ultron. His hatred for humanity had deepened fueling his conviction. Just when Hawaii shoots a bullet at Magneto, but at the last second, Quicksilver intervened, taking the bullet meant for his father. Quicksilver fell, and with him, Magneto's remaining child. Grief-stricken, Magneto retreated, carrying Thor's hammer as a trophy though it would ultimately amount to nothing. The battle was over, for now. Three days later, Dr. Doom stood triumphantly, holding the severed head of Ultron. But the real puppet master was not the Victor Von Doom they knew. This Doom was Mary Storm, the mother of Susan and Johnny Storm. Guided by the original Doom, who was trapped in another dimension. She had assumed his mantle, and her plans were just beginning. Thank you. 